been there because it's um, it's quite a um, an attractive place uh, for tourists, the Lake District. Around the donut you, you have, or around the hole in the donut, you have the dough, uh, which is um, not as well known. And Sellafield is on that coastal strip there. It's um, just 10 miles below south of Whitehaven. Whitehaven is where I chose to uh, live for the project. Sellafield is 10 miles south of that. Oh, and for some reason, I can't get to my next slide. Yes, there it is. So a bit of um, factual information about a cellar field. So it's a nuclear licensed site on the so-called energy coast. That's that strip uh, on, in West, West Cumbria. It's also an iconic place in the UK's imagination and self image. And my research project focuses on the site's decommissioning, but because from next year onwards, it will go into full decommissioning. There won't be any nuclear operations there anymore. The site has a very rich uh, and controversial history. It has produced plutonium uh, to um, produce uh, nuclear bombs in the 1940s and 50s. Um, it has reprocessed spent nuclear fuel that's going to end next year. It has also produced nuclear power since um, 1956 and that ended in 2003. And what's mostly left now are so-called intolerable hazards and legacy wastes, the wastes that are the result of um, operations that took place um, in earlier days when the site was uh, active with the um, things I mentioned just now. So those wastes uh, will remain radioactive for a very long time. So they must be retrieved and kept safe. And also the structures that are there and the land must be decontaminated. So um, the idea is to do environmental remedi remediation which moves the site towards a so-called end state. Now that transformation from nuclear operations to environmental re remediation is a process that's estimated to take 120 years. So it's a really long process be before that site can be left alone, so to say. But for now then, um, Sellafield Limited has basically become a nuclear waste management company and it's overseen by the UK's Nuclear Decommissioning Authority. So it's run, you can say, it's run by Sellafield Limited, but that's uh, for all intents and purposes, uh, a governmental institution. I also said it's quite an iconic site. So I show you here part of, uh, of that iconic uh, history that's there, because on the left you see, um, the so-called pile number one chimney. The piles were the reactors that produced um, plutonium in the beginning of uh, the, the nuclear site. And uh, in this particular chimney there, a fire took place, a so-called windscale fire in 1957. And uh, that chimney is still contaminated uh, with radioactive waste from when that happened. So that chimney that you see there is literally impregnated with history and also with politics, because it was, of course, the UK that chose to uh, produce plutonium for a nuclear bomb. It's ready to be dismantled only now because of the uh, severe contamination that was there. And what I found really interesting was when I interviewed a new Sellafield Limited recruit, a new uh, member, um, a new employee of Sellafield a few years ago. He told me when he did a placement with Sellafield before he got uh, um, engaged, recruited, he was really mesmerized each day walking past this chimney, the site of Britain's worst nuclear accident, which got nipped in the bud, fortunately. And he said to me, there is an allure of the secret as well and the complexity. And it is alluring now to be an insider 
and experience this historical place myself from close up, end of quote. And I myself, when I go onto the site, because Sellafield Limited have kindly um, given me access to the site, I find it quite alluring too, to know a bit about the history of this place and what's, what's it all gone through and um, what it still will be in the future. Because uh, as I said, it takes a long time to decommission that site. So in my research project, I've um, looked both at internal dynamics at the Sellafield site, and I've looked at how Sellafield functions in its West Cumbrian context. So I'm really interested, um, and I have another year to go on my project. I'm really interested in who the players are at and around um, Sellafield Lim Limited, how they relate to one another, what are the um, power politics going on, and how does the site function in the landscapes of which it is a part? coastal, industrial, political, ecological, societal landscapes. How does Sellafield shape its environment and how does the environment shape Sellafield? Now, in what I found in my research is really that um, Sellafield is closely entangled with West Cumbria, with the energy coast. It's the only major employer in the region it has sustained and still sustained and will sustain generations of workers and um, the entanglements that em employees have with Sellafield go beyond simply their pay. There's also an affectionate uh, relationship with Sellafield, also with the region um, more light, largely because Sellafield is very much appreciated and trusted in West Cumbria. And often people who don't live in the area find that surprising because they associate it foremost with uh, the risks and hazards that are there. But I found that um, there's really interesting mutual dependencies going on uh, between Sellafield, the company, the site, and the area around it. It's not just the Sellafield site or Sellafield Limited that has all the power there. The region around it has also um, uh, really an interesting uh, role to play in that mutual dependency. Now the decommissioning of course means that things will change because Sellafield will slowly disappear probably. Um, so it will be a transformation both for the company and for West Cumbria. The industry is bound by law to care for the communities around it. It cannot just simply say, okay, we will leave and that's it. So it's trying to empower local communities in becoming what they call vibrant. They want to see more vibrant communities. And that means in practice that Sellafield Limited hopes that uh, West Cumbria becomes less attached to nuclear only, that they will also engage in other um, ventures and enterprises. So that's something that's going on uh, right now. And yet what has been interesting to me is that there remain strong hopes in the area for new nuclear ventures. So the disentanglement will not be that straightforward at all, I think. What interests me uh, to end with, um, what interests me to explore in more depth is really that future there, that future of the Sellafield site. The nuclear industry and its waste will leave a legacy that's gonna stretch deep into the future because radioactive wastes will remain active for a long time to come. So I'm interested in what the Sellafield site might become post decommissioning in 120 years time. What will that end state be? But I'm also interested in going further. What does it mean to have that legacy of waste there and well, where will the waste go? One possible project will be um, a deep geological disposal facility 
the UK government is trying to find volunteers for a deep geological disposal facility. And actually West Cumbria has, has come forward as a potential site for that. Um, but anyway, uh, my interest in uh, the future there has already had a first step because um, in 2019, with a few colleagues of the University of Manchester, we organized a Sellafield Site Futures project. Um, we invited people that I'd come uh, to know through my fieldwork, a group of West Cumbrian professionals, both in the nuclear and in the non-nuclear. And we were asking ourselves, what could that site be when decommissioning is over. And we had an artist and an environmental philosopher on board, Wallace Heim. You see a uh, part of an artwork that she did for us in the background of this slide. And we were interested really in thinking about time, the future, about heritage. Could there be parts of the Sellafield site that become material her heritage? And of course, we're thinking about the end state of the site. And a potential next step in my research could be if I get the funding for it, and I'm waiting for uh, waiting to hear about about that. And possible next step could be collaboration with an ecologist who has expertise in ecosystem modeling and scenario building for a project on uh, nuclear sites, uh, nuclear decommissioning sites more broadly, not just Sellafield but other sites as well as playgrounds for future making, because I think that nuclear decommissioning lends itself very well to future making, because you have to think about the future if you're involved with that. So I leave it at this. Thank you very much for uh, listening to my talk. And I understand, uh, Aisha, that we're going to take uh, a break for now. Yes, lovely talk. Thanks very much for this. It was really interesting. So we are going to give a 10 minute break now and we will start at seven with questions and answers. Lovely, thanks very much. That's fine with me. Lovely. Okay. Great, let's get started then. Well, thanks very much for the interesting talk. We have got a couple of questions in there already, and I'm sure there will be more coming through as we chat through um, the um, or go through the questions. So um, the first question is, during your work, did you find that local people were keen to discuss how Sellafield affects their lives? All right, yeah, that's an interesting question. Um, I must say that most most of the um, engagement I've really had in the area is with people working in the nuclear industry. I have not tried to get um, an overall impression or a representative impression of um, of, of people living in, in the area. But generally, because, I, because I'm living there and I've made friends, so I know people who work in the industry and who don't, um, generally, um, I felt people were quite happy to, to discuss their views um, of, the, of, of the nuclear industry. And generally, in West Cumbria, the, those views, views tend to be quite positive. Um, people will say, well, it, it's a company that, um, that provides a lot of um, good employment and a lot of benefits to the area. There's all kinds of social projects also that they're involved with. So um, in, in general, people tend to be quite, quite positive. Um, but there's also because Sellafield uh, pays a really good high wages, there's also sometimes a feeling of resentment amongst those who have not been able to uh, to get a job or a career there. So, so there, there's a bit of a, um, an ambivalence there in, in the kinds of responses uh, that, that you get. But hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea. Uh, 
Okay, yeah, it does actually, it does. Thank you very much for that. Um, it's very interesting though. So the question that is followed up after this, which is something that I really am wondering as well, you mentioned that uh, sometimes if, you know, people might have resentment and because of that, their opinions might differ. So do you think that, it, was there any age split between positive and negative views held by people towards Sellafield? Mm, oh, that's, that's a difficult one. That's a difficult one. Um, of, of course, just, just to, um, to clarify, of course, people are very critical also of how the company operates. Often, often they will say, well, they, um, they, they earn a lot there, but the decommissioning is going only very slowly. The retrieval of waste is going very slowly because it's historically a very risk averse um, outfit, which is of course very understandable too, because they, they, they want to keep things uh, very safe, um, of course, with the materials they're working on. But your question was about um, different responses um, according to age. Mm, I haven't really seen that. I've, I've met quite a few people who are retired doing volunteering work, who, who retired from Sellafield and um, who have generally yeah, who, who enjoy a good pension, so who are generally quite positive. But I've also talked to older people um, who don't work there, haven't worked there, and um, who have those criticisms of things going very slowly or, um, or, or that everyone's always looking to sell a field uh, for anything to happen. Um, and same same thing I would say amongst younger people. So I guess my answer should be I, I can't tell you whether there's a, yeah. there's clear age differences. I, I haven't noticed them. Okay, all right. And uh, Maybe, um, one thing I, I, I could mention is that some people find um Sellafield slightly more interesting now because they have to deal with um nuclear waste. And if you're environmentally minded, of course, you, you want those wastes to be uh, taken care of. So some of the um, young people who apply for jobs with Sellafield um, have told me that that is a, a reason for them um, to, um, to want to work there because they, they, they see it as um, an obligation towards the environment. So that's quite interesting, I think. Yeah, yeah, that's quite good. That's quite interesting. And do you think um, part of the criticism might be because people actually do not know what's happening and how? So have you done any studies where maybe you have given them some information and see whether or not before and after the information their opinions have changed? Mm. Well, what, what, what's very interesting, I think, is that um, a, 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 an important part of my fieldwork has been um, going to meetings that take place where the industry is scrutinized by a forum. It's called the um, West Cumbria Site Stakeholder Group. Um, where you get lots of politicians, but also local politicians, but also uh, members of community groups uh, that form part of this uh, stakeholder group, where they can ask all kinds of questions and hold the nuclear industry to account. And what's striking in that environment is that um, local people tend to have a lot of knowledge about the nuclear industry because it's been there for a long time. Many people have worked there or know someone who has worked there. So in that sense, there is a, um, a high knowledge base to start with, much more so than outside of West Cumbria. So you get very different reactions to Sellafield when you uh, have conversations with people, for example, in Manchester, 
than the kinds of conversations that you get in, in West Cumbria. So that has been quite striking. Mm, interesting. That being said, there's also um, sometimes a surprisingly little engagement with um, what the nuclear industry is really, really about. I'm quite frustrated when I go to that stakeholder group that there's few people who have who are not a member of the stakeholder group who go there just to be informed mm. and to ask questions. So I tend to be one of the few members of the public who go there because of course it's interesting to me. So in that sense, um, I find it a bit disappointing that there's not more of a critical interest in what the mm. nuclear industry is, is doing. People seem to be kind of okay-ish with what is uh, what is going on. So oh, I, I, I myself would like to see more engagement. Oh, I see. What do you think can be done to improve engagement? Mm. Well, one, one interesting thing that's happening right now, and I, uh, I, I mentioned it briefly, is that uh, the, the UK government has launched this citing process for a deep geological facility for nuclear waste and um, West Cumbria, two boroughs in West Cumbria have come forward as potentially interested in hosting a facility like that. And uh, because they have come forward, the um, governmental um, institution that is tasked with citing uh, this facility must inform the public and they are trying very hard to uh, to get people interested in that so that's quite apart from Sellafield of course Sellafield um, has the lion's share of um, high activity nuclear waste mm -hmm. so um, the waste that is there will in the end go to that new facility if it is being built somewhere in, in the UK, if a volunteering community indeed agrees to have that waste. But um, it, it's two different, uh, Sellafield Limited is a very different entity from Radioactive Waste Management, which is the entity charged with uh, citing that facility. But it's interesting to see how they are trying to get people interested um, in that. So I'm following that process uh, as well. About Sellafield uh, Limited and how to get people more interested in what the site's doing. Uh, they, they do quite a few things um, online. They have a Facebook site. Um, most of what they've been doing with their stakeholder group has been online for the past year and a half because of uh, the pandemic. So, um, I must say they, they, they try, but my impression is that it's, it's very difficult to, to get um, people really worked up about, uh, about the nuclear industry, because again, there tends to be generally quite a bit of trust yeah. in the industry. Uh, yeah. yeah, 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 definitely. Well, thanks very much for that. So um, I wanted to ask, so um, again, this is coming from, the um, questions submitted to your YouTube. So has there been any previous work done looking at how Sellafield has influenced the local ecosystem? Um, well, well, there's, if, if with the ecosystem, um, what the, the person asking the question maybe means is the, the environment really because there's also a kind of a societal ecosystem or a social ecosystem but if, if we talk uh, about the environment here yeah um yeah there, there's um um a, a lot of ongoing research really all the time because a seller field limited is under the scrutiny of the environment agency and uh, the office for nuclear regulation so they they have to um, they will be punished and they are punished when they uh, do things that um, are not in accordance with um, legislation in the UK. So it's the Environment Agency that um, 
looks at the emissions at cellar field. So it looks at what goes into the air and into the soil, and that must stay within specific limits. And if it doesn't, the environment agency will, um, will take measures and will, um, will punish cellar field limited uh, for that. So, so there's mechanisms to, to deal with that. And again, this, this forum, this um, stakeholder forum is somewhere where people can come forward with their concerns and they can insist on um, um, monitoring uh, being done or being done um, more or differently. Um, so, so there's forums to, to do that. There's also the... Um, Food Standards Agency, um, which is quite interesting. So they have to um, monitor all the time whether um, foods produced in the area, and that can be um, shellfish or um, um, mutton, uh, you know, because sheep graze on uh, um, uh, graze. <laughs> in Sellafield and, and, and they may ingest radionuclides that, that are in the soil and that reach them through grass, for example. So that too uh, needs to be mod monitored all the time. So, so that kind of research is going on all the time and more fundamental research is, um, is done, um, for example, at the Dal Dalton Cumbrian facility, which is... Um, a facility that is part of the University of Manchester, but it's located close to the Sellafield site. And they uh, do all kinds of um, um, fundamental research, but they're also um, engaged in uh, doing robotics, for example, to help with retrieving waste. Um, so the University of Manchester also has a Dalton Nuclear Institute. So there's all kinds of nuclear related and environmental research going on there and at other universities in the UK. So there's partly this monitoring going on on a very um, um, practical basis. So to make sure that nothing's going uh, wrong uh, at the minute, but there's also more fundamental, fundamental research going on. And again, I'm all, always hoping that people will come to the stakeholder forum and ask really critical questions to make sure that this kind of monitoring and research is being done well, because of yeah. course, it's all about uh, creating a safe environment. Yeah. And the nuclear industry must be held to account. Exactly, exactly. Well, thank you very much for that. I think what would be interesting is to uh, look at for example, um, the levels in the harvest in the areas near the nuclear plant versus an area that's further up a field and see if there are any significant differences because even though these things are monitored, we do not know where these are going and we don't know what the cumulative effect will be over time, do we? Right, right. Yeah, of, of course, you're going go now into an area which is not my, my research yeah. discipline. Yeah. But um, yeah, there, there's a, a, a plume of radionuclides in the soil under Sellafield. And of course, that must be and is monitored very closely. I've had, I've heard um, a, a nuclear scientist say that Sellafield may, may be one of the most closely monitored sites in the world for that kind of um, um, contamination. So this plume, radionuclides um, move and move in the soil and, and, and can go elsewhere. So that, that plume is monitored very closely, but because of course, um, you don't want it to reach any aquifers. You don't want it to, to um, lead to uh, unacceptable contamination. Of course, there's also natural uh, radioactivity uh, in the environment. Uh, Cornwall is often mentioned as a place where, because of the granite, gra granite 
Grenite, Grenit. It's much higher than elsewhere in the UK. So uh, that, that's also something that, that we live with generally, naturally, so to say. Um, but that is not to at all uh, diminish the fact that, uh, of course, that site needs to be closely monitored. And what I find really interesting as a social scientist is how that monetary monitoring happens, because, of course, it's done through measuring. Yeah. I'm really interested in how that measuring is done and how different categories of waste are um, seen as having different outcomes in terms of um, their potential hazards and, and how that is monitored and how these categories do not go without saying these categories depend on certain decisions that are made by scientists who yeah. and by um, policy make policy people and by uh, regulators. So um, what I find fascinating as a social scientist is to question what the assumptions are behind such different categories, mm -hmm. how these assumptions are made, and whether perhaps we should also question those assumptions, because they often become taken for granted. Yeah but they are not, they are human decisions that are based on assumptions. So that's what I find really interesting to yeah, think about. It is, it is indeed. So we have one last question, if you are not too tired. <laughs> um, how are the attitudes about Sellafield in the local region uh, is similar or different to other local communities with nuclear facilities? Right, yeah, th that's an interesting question. Um, as an anthropologist, I kind of base myself on the evidence that, that I find in the, the fieldwork site where I do research. So in, in that sense, I have done research only at and around Sellafield, so not, not elsewhere. But of course, I've read about uh, other places where other social scientists uh, have, done, uh, have done work. Sellafield is quite an interesting and unique site because it has so much of the UK's um, um, highly active nuclear waste. So it, it's, it's quite um, interesting in that sense, because uh, you would expect it to, uh, to be maybe generating the, 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 the most concerns um, locally. But as I said, uh, trust in the company uh, that manages it is, is quite high. Um, one other side, um, because again, it's decommissioning eh, that I'm interested in. Um, I have done research only on nuclear decommissioning, so I'm interesting, interested in how the retrievals and the environmental remediations uh, are, are done, not in um, a site that still produces, uh, uh, that still has nuclear operations. So, so you have to, to keep that in mind also, because it's a, it's a different kind of hazards than you would have at a at an operational nuclear plant that produces, uh, that generates um, power, nuclear power. So that's, that's a bit different. So one site that is comparable and that is also, that is a bit further in its decommissioning is a Dune Ray in Scotland. It's, it's much, much smaller. It used to be a, a research site. Um, so they have a reactor now, they had a, an experimental reactor now that is now being decommissioned. And um, what's happening there is that you say, see the same kinds of um, problems that uh, West Cumbria is grappling with. And that is the question, what do we do now that that major employer is, um, is slowly disappearing? And in uh, Doom Ray, that process is al already a bit uh, further on its way. So there will be work in decommissioning, 
for um, a considerable time to come, especially at Sellafield much less so at Dunre, but the worries of people in the area are much more about what will, uh, what work will there be for the next couple of generations, much more so than about hazards associated with nuclear operations. So you really have to keep that in, in mind. It's really um, much more about what job will people be doing in 20 or 50 years time? What opportunities are there? Rather than um, I'm worried about um, something going wrong at the cellular mm. plant. That's really interesting to keep in mind. Yeah, it is actually. People outside of West Cumbria um, don't, don't really think along those lines and as an anthropologist I'm really interested in the kind of world views that you get in a specific area mm -hmm. so in West, West Cumbria the world view is really that um, things are seen through a nuclear lens if you will and in general the nuclear is associated with great economic uh, opportunities. That's really the lens through which people have seen the world and that is now perhaps changing because of the decommissioning of Sellafield, but still people are hoping for new nuclear ventures. They're hoping for, for example, small um, modular reactors to be sited in West Cumbria or that deep geological disposal facility. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, re it's really a different uh, take on, uh, on the nuclear from what you would hear uh, elsewhere in, um, in, in the UK. And of course, there's also always people also in West Cumbria who do not like um, um, nuclear ventures and who want to go, for example, completely with um, with other uh, industrial or non-industrial uh, enterprises in the area. So okay. I don't want to generalize too much, but there's, there's a real, real difference in outlook from um, wh when it comes to the nuclear industry than elsewhere in, in the UK. Okay, well, lovely. Thank you very much. I don't think we have any further questions. We kept you talking for about an hour in total. Right. Well, and, uh, really yeah. Questions really, really interesting to uh, to have your uh, your feedback and uh, yeah. Very nice. Thanks very much. And I uh, we're hoping that we will you will be back to give us maybe some updates at some point. And thank you very much. Well, you're so welcome. It was a pleasure to uh, to engage with you all, even though I can't see you. <laughs> Bye-bye then. Lovely. Thank you. Bye-bye.